Hello, hello everybody. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I've got a. I'm actually preparing to mix up a uh, a glaze. It's a it's a glaze. It's thinly applied and it's a, like a transparent glaze. So I've got a recipe here, which is felspar, wood ash, and uh, kaolin. Well, the wood ash, the wood ash, in this recipe, I want to actually wash it. So, oh, I thought I'd bring you in on that. <laughs> I don't usually wash wood ash, actually. But anyway, I'll just show you what I'm doing. Down there in that bucket, as you can see, I have got some wood ash, which is just wood ash from my fireplace. And um, as you can see, it's got all the bits of charcoal and bits of semi-burnt wood, etc. So, what we need to do, you see, what we need to do is because if you if you use wood ash unwashed like i sometimes do when i'm when i'm uh, when i'm spraying wood ash and water mixed together sieved and mixed together you see me do that sometimes it gives a kind of nice toasty look to the outside of a a pot doesn't it with wood ash sprayed over but with this one i actually want to use it as a as an ingredient in the glaze so i need to wash it because if i don't the wood ash contains a lot of fluxes and um, will cause the, the, the glaze to run because of all the fluxes will cause, will reduce the melting point of the glaze. So in order to prevent that from happening, what we have to do is take up the wood ashes and wash them. Ha ha. So how do you do that? Okay, let's just come over here. Now, as you can see, I have got, I've already got one bucket there. Okay, so this, we're going to, I'm just going to add water to that, you see. And what we're going to do is just let it fill up with water. And you'll be surprised how much volume of ash you need and how much water it will take. So don't just put a little bit in, you put a decent amount in because with this process, with this process what we're going to do is after it's all been washed, we've then got to, what's left, dry it out and then sieve it, you see. And so you end up with not so much at the end of it as you might think. Not as much as you might think. So, here we have my wood ashes. And you really do need to let these soak. See how much water it's taking. Because the wood ash, you see, has got a lot of air trapped in it. But when you add the water to it, all the air disappears and what you're left with is not as much as you, as you might think. La 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 la. Give it a good old stir. Give it a stir. Well, these are wood ashes out of my fireplace and I know someone is going to ask me and say, oh, well, what kind of wood is it, Simon? What kind of wood ash? Well, in this case, in actual fact, it is, um, it's just wood from the forest. <laughs> I don't actually, I don't actually know exactly what it is. It's wood. It's like, it's wood I found. It's a mixture. <laughs> Not very helpful, Simon. <laughs> no, probably not. 
Sorry about that. But there are actually... Um, hang on a second. Um, you'd be surprised. This is my, my granddad's book, the Potter's book. But in here, in here, um, in this book somewhere, and I intend, I intend to find it. Um, you've got a section here on, yeah, vegetable ashes. Wood ash. You see, wood ash is one of the one of the most basic glaze ingredients that has been used since time immemorial. And you see, potters originally stumbled across it probably because they that what they noticed was that in the kiln they put the pots into the kiln and they may not have had a glaze on them at all on the outside. You see, and then um, they took note that after the firing that there were certain parts of the, the pots that had this a kind of glaze appearing on, on one side of the pot where the flames had passed by that pot, you know, at that particular point, passed by and, and left a deposit of fly ash, as they call it, fly ash, which is the wood ash carried from the firebox throughout the whole kiln, you see. Anyway, this fly ash deposits itself on the pots. So they begin to realize and they begin to think, hey, look, the wood ash is making a glaze on its own. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because wood ash is very easily accessible. Anyway, in this, um, here, I'll just change the focus here a bit on this, this camera. Um, I don't know if that's going to make any difference. You're probably not going to see it properly, but as you can see, well, anyway, here, uh, Grandad did a lot of um, uh, tests, and um, he's got down uh, here Japanese rice straw ash, fully washed, Japanese isu ash, fully washed, thatching reed ash, fully washed, mixed autumn weed ash, unwashed, ditto, fully washed, apple pulp ash, once washed, ditto, unwashed. Lawn mowings, ash, ash, once washed. Ditto, unwashed. Bracken ash. And he goes on, this way, boxwood ash, applewood ash, wheat husk ash. Well, anyway, if you look here down the, down the side here, they, they all got, like, along the top here, silica, alumina, phosphorus, iron, lime, potash, magnesia, carbonate, sulfate, chloride. Hard, medium, soft. I'm not sure, sure what that means. But anyway, but they're all different, you see. For example, um, if you look at the silica, silica content of applewood ash, once washed, it's 2.65. By contrast, if we look at, um, at the top here, Japanese rice straw ash, fully washed, that's 77.68. So 2.65 and 77.68. And all of the, in this table here, everything is different between these. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that, that, that wood, uh, sorry, um, of course the, the, uh, the wood, the wood, the tree draws from the ground the the minerals doesn't it up into the up into the via the sap into the tree and and there these minerals are deposited and reside there in what becomes the wood of the tree of course we then burn it and form an ash is formed and um but they're all different, you know, you get different results. Uh, I've done, I've tried almond wood ash, 
and uh, and pine wood ash and um, carob wood ash and they all give a different anyway you need to experiment but for the purposes of this what I'm showing you here I'm just uh, this is just wood ash from a mixture of wood woods which I have um, I've literally just taken it from from my stove here my wood burning stove so you see in here now when you collect wood ash from somewhere like this be careful you don't scrape your shovel too much against the the side of the stove because it may have rust you see there may be rust there and you scoop up a load of a load of iron with it unwittingly so oh, la, 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 la. let's get back to doing this because this here now is going to be left you see as I said you want to leave that so what will happen now is it will sediment out in other words the heavier particles will sink to the bottom you will leave the bits of wood floating on the top we will scoop them off. Now here in this bucket, this is some that I've already, I've already had soaking for a while. And what I need to do is remove this liquid. Now all of the, all of this liquid, um, all of the, uh, the fluxes and uh, st coming out of the wood ash go into the water and form lye. L Y E, and lye, it makes uh, when you touch it with your finger, it feels like soapy water. It feels very slippery. You see, well, you just need to realise that lye is also caustic. It can burn your skin, and so you don't really want to have your hands in it for too long. Okay, so don't. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just Scooping out this lye now, you see. I tell no lie. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. where the sediment is I have to be careful I don't remove too much of the you can use a, a shallow bowl to remove some of this lye Okay, that's as, that's as much of the lie as I'm going to remove right now. Let's just uh, bring the camera a bit closer. We can get into this bucket somehow. Now, I just want to show you, you see, you see that? Well, that's, that'll have the heavy particles on the bottom here and finer and finer and finer on the top. Okay, so this now... That has now been washed. I've done it three times, okay? So what I do, what I would do, if this was the first time, I would just fill the bucket up to the top, you see? Like I did, like you saw me do with the other, the yellow, bu the yellow bucket over here. And give it a good stir, let it sediment out, and then do what I've just done here, okay? And then when I get down to this, I will then add more water, you see? Bring it up to the top again stir it all around and then and then 
scoop off the water off the top. You can use a jug, you could use a little siphon tube, but anyway, get that water off. And I'm, I've done this three times. You're going to have to experiment, you see. It may be that once is enough for you, you know, in your glaze. Um, it, may be, it may be you want to do it a couple of times, you know. So what do we do next? Well, what we do next is with all the with the with the washed with the washed sludge. You saw that sludge, yeah. Well, with that sludge, which has been washed, I'm going to take it and I've got to, and I'm going to dry it out. And you can put that say on a plaster bat, or you could put it in a bisque fired bowl, okay? So the bowl draws the water out of it because we need to get that dry before we add it to the glaze recipe, don't we? Otherwise, if it's got a lot of moisture in it, the, the scale will measure the weight of the moisture. So all the ingredients have got to be all dry together. C'est la vie. <laughs> so, um, so as you can see, this is a process that, that, it, that needs a little bit of uh, preparation. It's not like you're going to sort of just, oh, I'll, make, I'll mix up an ash glaze and I'll do it now. You've got to do this, plan this a few days ahead. So that's what I'm doing. It's not something I do very often. In fact, I've never, you know what? <laughs> I'll tell you the honest truth. I've never done this before in my life. I've seen it done. I can remember at home at the pottery. Father had outside, in along a corridor outside, he, he had these um, tubs. They were like uh, mm, barrels, half barrels, you know that were cut in half and they're all full of different wood ashes and uh, we did use a wood ash glaze at Lower Dam back in the day and uh, but I never actually was involved really in the in this bit of the process so I'm learning just like you maybe maybe you're an expert <laughs> if you are we'll chip in and give us some advice <laughs> well we, we, then we can all learn together Anyway, wish me luck and we'll, we'll check in on this when I've got it all ready and dry. And um, we'll mix up this glaze. I was going to actually talk about doing some other stuff that I'm doing here in the studio because I'm doing like a hodgepodge of a mixture of different things. It's one of those days, a bit of this, a bit of that, you know. Um, do you ever do multitasking in the pottery? <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we all do, don't we? Because there's always sometimes there's lots of things to do. I'm I'm packing a bisque kiln over there. I've got other pots I've got to prepare. I've got to put sand up some bowls, you know, to put them into the bisque. It's all stuff you've seen me do before. But um, anyway, I'll carry on with that. <laughs> this is Simon Leach saying, keep practicing and visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. Thank you. Bye-bye. Dee dee dee.